Hello and welcome. Thanks for joining me here today. Today I want to talk to you about HP Nimble Storage and more specifically about HP's physical architecture and connectivity. So on that note, let's dive in. So here we are looking at the back of the physical array and as you'd expect with any enterprise grade solution has no single point of failure. Again, this rings true here. So on my left, I've got controller A, and on my right, I've got controller B. And this is an active passive architecture. And what I mean by that is a single controller drives all performance. And upon a controller failure, the remaining controller will take over and still deliver maximum performance. Now, further to my right, I have two power supplies. Power supply one and power supply two. And these are independent power supplies that aren't tied to a controller. So that means upon an actual power supply failure, the remaining power supply has the ability and capability of driving the power required for both controllers. So let's move on to the ports. The ports have are set up in what's called a mirrored pair and I have highlighted here ETH0A. So this is a pair of ports that is typically used for LAN management and replication. And again, there's no single point of failure. So I have another mirrored pair of ports ETH0B. Again, used for LAN management and replication. Let's move on to the remaining ports. So all the all the six remaining ports here that I'm I'm showing now are in my case typically used for iSCSI data traffic. Now configure configurations will vary from array to array uh, in number of ports, uh, number of HBAs, but also connectivity options. So Nimble support today. Base T, SFP Plus, and also Fibre Channel. So just bear in mind, if you're looking at the back of your array, it may look slightly different. So these are highlighted ports, as I've said, that are used for iSCSI traffic typically, and in my case, labelled as ETH1A. Now the other thing to note is the actual labelling of these ports goes in different directions so bear that in mind and che check with the actual label diagram on the back of the array. So I've got these mirrored ports here for iSCSI data traffic and again we've got no single point of failure. So we've got another mirrored pair here. Why these are labelled in mirrored pairs is upon an actual controller failover or failure the opposite port that is in that mirrored pair will pick up that traffic that was traversing on the previous port and, and do that um, under the covers and, and just continue to, to run. Next, moving on and scaling out this architecture, typically you have a pair of switches. Now, the solution can be delivered from a single switch However, for resilience purposes, would highly recommend there's at least two switches in the environment. So going with that, I've got my pair of switches. And I would basically, let's say, controller A is the active controller. I would basically cable it as, as shown in the diagram. So I would take my, let's say, ETH1A port and I would cable that into, into switch A and I would cable uh, ETH1B over to port 1 switch B. Now the reason for that is basically I've got, I'm splitting out the bandwidth on the active controller. So what that means is if I have a switch failure 
I've still got half the bandwidth and the array continues to run. Now just sort of tacking in the actual cabling for um, for the passive controller highlighted in in, in the in the in green. As you can see the theme still applies. So ETH1 uh, ETH one A into switch A in port one there, look, I've got the same mirrored port going to the same switch. So just bear that in mind. What I've also done is I've brought this down into modules across the switches in my design. So I'm basically load balancing across A6 within the actual switch itself. So as you can see, if I then carry on with that theme, um, I'm basically tapping in on on this one here. Look, I've got as you can see the the actual labeling goes the opposite way. So I've took ETH one A into switch A port one, and then I've gone onto onto this HBA and took ETH two A, and then patched that across into this module in the same switch. So I've got all my A ports that are driven into switch A across these three modules. So I'm load balancing across switches, but also A6 in this design. And I've done that the same, obviously, with controller B. So controller B um, in ETH1A, which is, uh, let me just get this correct, this port here again goes across to this port here so that's important that we get the same mirrored ports go into the same switch so ETH, ETH1A on both controllers goes to the same switch ETH1B again on both controllers go to the same switch now, in my example, I'm using a single IP scope, so a, sing, a single subnet across that. And what's also important is that there are links between the switches. So in my case, what I've got is an ISL uh, trunk that sits between the switches. And they're there for inter-controller communication that needs to happen. And I've also put a pair of cables in, so I've got resilience there. So if I lose connectivity across a single cable, I've also got a, a single cable remaining so that inter-controller communication can still happen. It also provides bandwidth for uplink failures so we can still get to the host. And I'll show you that now. So... In my case, um, I've got, as you can see, QSFP uh, ISL trunk there. But th the idea is that you need su sufficient bandwidth um, that the array can deliver across that. And what I mean by that is if you, if you need 20 gigs worth of bandwidth going up the, uh, on the uplinks, you need that on uh, across the ISL as well and what that means is then we can still deliver maximum performance so in my example as you can see I put in three hosts obviously the the solution supports more um, and I've cabled them accordingly again so I've got load balancing across the solution so let's just look at node one as the example so in node 1, I've got two HBAs, so I've got no single point of failure there. And I've took one port out of each, so I've got 20 gigs worth of bandwidth, and one going to switch A, and one going to switch B. Again, so I'm load balancing, and I'm using NPIO drivers on the host to, to dictate that load balancing down to the iSCSI array. And again, that, that rings true across all the hosts. I've, I've basically uniformed 
the, the same design on one on one node across the remaining two. Um, this works for, as I've said, many more nodes and also in a converged environment too. Hope that guy. Hope that makes sense, guys. I'd like to take the time to say thanks for viewing. If you like the video, as always, please like, subscribe, and share. Peace out.